Hello and welcome to this video where we're going to be taking a look at the automation in Halion Sonic and Halion Sonic SE. Typically automation of VST instruments is pretty straightforward. You pick the parameter either on screen or from the automation menu and then automate it. But in the case of Halion Sonic, there's just too many options. If you look at Flux, it's probably got 50 controls, each of which can be automated. And in some of the Halion Sonic full instruments, there will be even more. And if you imagine multiplying that by 16 slots, you'd have 800, maybe 1,000 different parameters to wade through. That can be hard enough, even on a synth which is simpler, such as silent, there are a load to go through, and it can be difficult to find where you are. So Halion takes a different approach where you pick which parameters you're going to automate, and then you've only got a few to choose from, and they're named generally pretty sensibly. So let's take a look at it. So here we are, you can see we've got Halion Sonic uh, SE set up, but for most of this, it won't be any different other than the instruments themselves. And once you've got the hang of it, you'll be able to do this on any of the instruments on any of the content that's included. So here we have our Flux Arp starting point, which you may recognize from a previous video. And I'm just gonna look at this parameter here to keep it nice and simple as ever. So we've got the position parameter. Now, if we want to automate this, typically what you would do is you would go open up the automation lane and then you would click here. And if you can't see it immediately, you'd go to more, find the instrument in question, which is Halion Sonic SE, and then you would find it in your list here. But when we look here, we see under slot one, we've only got some more general parameters, which are admittedly sort of hardwired and set up ready to go. So things like in this case, quick controls. So we've got our quick controls here, and we've also got these generic things, mute, solo, volume, and some things from the mixer, but not much. So we certainly haven't got access to the synth parameters straight away, and we need to assign them. So this is pretty easy to do. So I'm just going to say right-click, but if you're on a MacBook, it's two-finger tap. So here, the control in question, I'm going to right click and we see we get this option assigned to new automation. So if I click that, a couple of things happen. Firstly, if we right click again, we can see the, the menu has now changed. So we've got one of the options here, which is really useful, is to show this automation track. So that tells Cubase to show it. So in fact, I'm going to do that right now. And you can see now we've got our position, uh, position X wavetable 1 control is available and now we can draw that in but also we have the option to forget the automation as well you can if you need to you can undo that we'll look at that later on but the main thing is we are now set up so if you didn't take that option there you could of course wade through the menu so you would go to more and in sort of se and you think you would find it under slot one no it's under automation. So you go down here, go to automation, and we can see originally this would have said automation one. It now says zone wavetable one position X. So that's set up and ready to go. You can find it either way. It may be different on your host. And now we can automate this and this will change that. So as I play this back, you'll see this position control changing. So we've got control over this. So that's the basic setup, allocating a control to an automation slot and then automating it in Cubase or whatever host you're using. Simple. But there's a few bits and pieces which you can do in addition to this, and that's what we're going to have in the rest of the video. Firstly, looking at how you change the name of that parameter. Now you may be wondering why you would change the name of this parameter, but in fact, if we go to another flux here, so I've, I'm using this in multi-timbal mode, as you can see, we've got a few different ones here, which we're going to look at in a little bit. but if I then automate this one, so I'll assign this one to new automation. If I show this one, you can see they're both called the same thing. In fact, I'm going to apply some automation so they will both do what I want now. So you may think, well, maybe they're not exactly the same name, but if I put both of these lanes to do something else, now we will see them in the menu. You see they've got exactly the same name, which if you're using it like this could be a little confusing, but also, it's a bit of a mouthful. So we can change this. And the way that you do it is you go to options and then click on automation and here are all your slots. So then we can rename them. So let's call it slot one 
WT position and slot for WT position. And now when we pick this up in the menu here, it's much easier to see because it's already a mouthful because it's got Halion Sonic SE automation on there. So something a bit briefer will be useful there. Next up, deleting or forgetting an automation assignment. Now, generally, this would be straightforward. Aside from the fact, there's a little thing to catch you out, which we're going to look at next. So here you can see the setup. We've got slot one position on the top and slot four position at the bottom. So something we did earlier on. And now we can delete it. So we can either delete it here or you can do it by going back to the relevant control, which in this case is our slot four flux and then unassigning it there. But I'm actually going to do it here. So wavetable 2, position X. So just going to delete that. Now, notice what happens here. The automation data does not get deleted in Cubase. So Cubase is still going to wave this control, even though it's not assigned to anything. So if I click this here, we can see that now Cubase knows this is no longer what we called it. It's just automation two. So if I now assign something else, so we'll go back to this flux. So we see them both at the same time. I'm going to turn on the second oscillator. And this time I'm going to assign it to, let's say, level this one here, which was previously the automation data that was controlling the position. But I'm going to do assign to new automation here. And you see now... Zone 1 wavetable level appears, but it's got some data in there, and it's got that old data in there. So, so that's one thing to watch out for, is that if you do delete an automation assignment, that that data remains back in Cubase, and then if you then use that same automation slot for something else, it could come back to bite you. Obviously, you could have a happy accident with it, and it could turn out to be the greatest thing ever, or you could even make use of this, but it would be much easier, really, just to copy the automation data between tracks rather than relying on this to do it for you. One of the most powerful aspects of this system is that you can use one track of automation data to control multiple settings from within Halion. So in this example, we're going to use the wavetable data set up earlier on to control more than one wavetable position at the same time. So here again is that same setup. So as I press play, you'll see the wavetable position here will move. And we can just assign that same controller to this position as well. So again, right-clicking here, we can add to automation. And you can see it's called slot 1 WT position. And now this will do both. So again, if we go back to the beginning and play, I'm going to turn multi off so it's a little clearer to see what's going on. But you see both of them working in the same way. And in this way, you can control many synths at the same time, as we're now going to see. So here we have another flux set up on this slot. And again, it's exactly the same as before. So it's not just limited to an individual slot, even though I called it slot one, but we could call it anything. But I can just do add to automation and slot one WT position and do the same here. And now all four, so the two on this one and the two on this one will all move in perfect synchrony as they go. So you can imagine if you're building up multi-layered since you can control all of them with just a single control if you want to build some massive multi-layered synth with slight variations, etc., but a lot of controls being controlled in the same way with a single control. Discovering which controls are automatable is fairly straightforward. Generally, just right-click on them, and if you get the appropriate menu about adding automation slots, then you're in business but not every control can be automated. So quite a few of the buttons can't be automated in this way. But also one of the things which possibly you would want to do, changing arpeggiator preset slots, isn't available directly. But there is a way around this. I'm just going to show you it. Strictly speaking, you could say, well, that's not automation, but it is automating a change. So I'm just bundling it in under this. But let's take a look at how to do it. So here we are, the arpeggiator is turned on. Now, all we want to do is to be able to change these variations here. So pick between them during the course of a song. And 
that can be done, but not straight away via automation. So if you right click on these, we get assign variation to, and unfortunately it's trigger pads. So these are these trigger pads here, and you can see this one is assigned to number one. Number two has been assigned to number two, and so on. So to assign number three, I just go assign variation to trigger pad three. And now if I play these, you can see we are changing here. Now, these can respond to MIDI notes. So you can either use the defaults or you can assign notes to them or you can learn from a keyboard. So they're pretty straightforward to do. So in this case, I'm just going to do C minus one for that one. And this one, I'm going to make it D minus one to make my life slightly easier. And this one, E minus one. So these are notes which aren't going to be represented in my musical notes. They're going to be way below the range of what I'm playing. So these will just be used as control notes. So there, these will control that. And now if I send this data on this channel, that will change those. So just drawing in a part quickly. And now if we scroll down to, in this case, C minus one. So C minus one will happen at this point. You can see that there. C minus, sorry, D minus one will trigger that one. And then E minus one will trigger that. So as I play this back, you'll see this changing between those three pans pretty quickly. But you can see that works. And that's how you can control those. Using MIDI notes, which are outside the playable range of a synth sound, is a pretty common technique for performing these kind of changes. So it's the kind of thing you've probably seen before, particularly if you experimented with any contact instruments, which often use that kind of technique. But being able to set that up is useful, and it's something you'll probably find you can come back to multiple times in Halion. If you want to automate parameters on channels 2 to 16 of a multi-timbral Halion Sonic, you've got two choices. You can either use the automation as we've seen, which will belong with the instrument track or the rack instrument track, depending on how you've got it set up, or you can use MIDI data to do pretty much the same thing as we're going to see. Now, there are some reasons why that may not be perfect, because apart from anything else, MIDI doesn't know what kind of thing you're automating. It will just send out MIDI controller data with values from 0 to 127. So it may not have the nice steps that you may see on stepped controllers where you've got switches, etc. And also it may not have the resolution that you want because we can only send those 128 values, whereas automation has more values than that available. So you may hear some sort of stepping, some stair stepping, etc. quantization effectively in what you've done. But sometimes it can be a useful thing to do. So that's what we're going to look at now. So here we have in slot number two, we've got a trip. And as ever, if we want to automate this using automation tracks within that first track, we can just do assign to new automation. So you can see here, it's just assigned that. I can bring that up. So show filter. And here's filter cutoff. And you can see we can automate that. And it knows the numbers. This is the important thing. So you can see. It's got all these different settings here. It's got more than 127 settings. If we expand this up, we get a lot of resolution in there. And we can see in this case, the actual frequency that it's working on. So it's working uh, reasonably sensibly. The scale works well for us. Now, if we want to do the same thing via this track here, so let's say you just want to keep all of your automation with the track in question. So this is track two, which is feeding this moving background. In fact, if I play on my keyboard, we can see in here that that's what it's doing. So it's playing on this particular synth. Now we can assign these to controllers. So if we right click, we can do learn CC. I'm going to send it some CC data from my controller keyboard here. So now I've assigned this just as you've seen previously before. Is controlling that there. And now if I record or draw this in, we will get the relevant information. So in this case, it's CC71, which I've got on my keyboard. So then I can draw this in and this will control that there. 
So as I play that, you may be able to see that it's stair-stepping slightly. And the reason it's doing that is because there's only 128 values available to cover the whole range. So even if I expand this to be larger, there will not be more values available. And I can get to everyone. In fact, you can see when I'm moving this, sometimes it moves pixels, but it's not changing value because there aren't any more values to be had. We've got all of them from, in this case, 0 to 127. So this is another area where you need to make a choice whether you're deciding what you're optimizing for, whether it's how many synths you're running, convenience, whether or not your automation belongs with the instrument you're using it on or is somewhere else, etc. So it's one of those decisions you just need to make. So there you go, a look at Halion Sonic's automation system. So while it's not as immediate as many VST instruments, it does solve the problem of having 800 or 1,000 different parameters that you have to wade through by meaning that you just need to set the ones that you're actually going to use rather than having everything available. It also opens up possibilities to use the same automation to control multiple controls at the same time. So if you want to go completely crazy and set up 16 fluxes and have all of their wavetables cycling in exactly the same way under your total control, you can do that with it. As ever, I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider liking and subscribing, and we'll see you again soon for more Music Tech Tuition.